morning, good morning. I think we're free and unlimited is the uh, epitome of peace being proactive. So we have done our talk. Wonderful to see you. Bye. <laughs> music seems to do that. Well, that's one of my peace places, music. I don't know if we would, what we would do if we didn't have music, if we didn't have song. Earth, Wind, and Fire is one of my peace places. You know, I remember when I was a little girl in my age of innocence season, it was like, who's going to make me stop being upset? <laughs> the elements of the universe. <laughs> and that's what this is. This unity is the elements of the universe coming together. So we've got a lot going on. Tuesday, we're voting. Vote. That's all I'm going to say to that. Your voice counts. I stand on the shoulders of those who got beat up, hung, dragged. So I'm voting. You know, matter of fact, I've already voted. <laughs> I did early voting. And so it's Veterans Day coming up on the 11th. You know, they, they stood for that freedom as well for us to, men and women, they stood there and said, we're going to be free, and freedom should be unlimited. So all of those who were in, in the United Forces and still are, I actually got a, a frame from an auction that I went to. Um, I have a relative by my children, my marriage to their father. Janet Harmon Braggs was inducted into the... Aviation Hall of Fame, April 30th, 2022. I think I told you about that. And um, when I went to that particular affair, they had a silent auction, and I got this sign that says, Freedom isn't free. And it had all the armed forces up there. It had the Navy, the U.S. Air Force, the Marine. Who am I missing? Army. The Army. Oh, please forgive me, Army. Oh, <laughs> National Guard, you know, they had them all up there. I think it was five of them. But to have peace, you have to be proactive. It's just not going to come to you. It can, because it does. It meets us, but we have to have it within ourselves for us to attract it to us. Let me put it that way. So one of the things that I know, you know, sometimes I can't blast earth, wind, and fire in some of the settings that I'm in. What does come to mind that most of us know when we're growing up, I would have to ask my grandchildren because they might not even be aware of this, but I'm going to ask them immediately. Do they know the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, if you can't say that and come to some peace of mind, you're not listening. And I think that's where peace is, too. Peace is in the pause. We, we got to pause. You know, something somebody does to us, we want to just go ahead and react. You know, eye for an eye. They said we'd be all walking around blind if we did that. <laughs> you know, I heard that. I'm like, you're right. Let me keep my eyes. I need them. So I said that I have to have something I can draw on proactively so I can have peace immediately, not on the other side when I leave, 
you take it with you. So if you're disturbed, you're going to take that disturbance with you. You're still going to have to figure it out. I believe we're all energy, so you figure it out some kind of way. So I want to be attracted to those proactive peace seekers like Unity of Gainesville. Another proactive way I had in my life was television and movies besides music. Mainly movies, because I didn't like the commercials. <laughs> you know, a commercial is going to tell you something, have you buy something, and they make you hungry. You know, you see, I'm like, Dad, I wasn't even hungry. I want some wings. I want to go to Olive Garden. You know, I need a new car. You know, they just feed you. I'm like, well, let's get rid of the commercials. You're disturbing my peace. So recently, a movie came on, because it's been since I was a kid. Charlie Brown and Snoopy. They've been kind of peacekeepers for me, as particularly Snoopy. Because, you know, when you really look at Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown was kind of cruelly treated, wasn't he? They didn't really treat him. You know, I didn't really see that as a kid. You know, he was, you know, he was bullied. Charlie Brown was beat, and Lucy, Lord. Lucy would not cut him a break for nothing. And he would keep going after the football like she's going to hold it for him to kick it, and then she'd go again. So that was the lighter side of cruelty. But what they showed in the more recent 2015 one is that he was trying to make an impression on a little redhead girl, and they wanted to do a report together. And the book he picked was War and Peace. Y'all know how thick that book is? <laughs> This is a big, I'm like, Charlie Brown, you just asked for it, don't you? But I'm glad he picked that because we're on that proactive tip for peace because war is proactive too. So there is going to be that contrast that even the, Efe I think it was, was it Ephesians? I have to remember, I did it before, but um, it tells us in the Bible there's a time for. Which is it? It's a, you know the Bible, a time for love, a time for hate, a time, a, Ecclesiastes. And it's a time for war and a time for peace. It says it. So there's going to be some disturbance in the force. Why well, I like Star Wars so much. You know, Darth Vader was a Jedi. He got disturbed by the dark side, you know, but he was light first. So any one of us can have so much darkness that we run into that we lose. We think we're losing our light. We're losing our peace. We're losing our way. And when we think we're losing our way, cruelty can come in. That's how it came in with Charlie. Brown. That's how it comes in with war. When you feel like you're at your weakest, that's that's when they're gonna get you. When you're down there. So a lot of us could have grown up with some domestic violence that wasn't labeled properly. They called it discipline. Hmm. Interesting. It, yeah, it worked for some well. We found this teaching for those that it worked well for. For the ones that it didn't work so well for, they may not even be with us anymore, or they have incarcerated themselves in some way because peace is proactive. That's why we're here. We were disturbed by something in our past, too, that looked like bullying and and crushing and manipulating and slavery of the mind. Slavery of our emotions, of our spirituality. If you're not like me, I'm going to hurt you. I know that we can rise above that noise because that's all it is. It's noise. <laughs> Get out of my ear. Get out of my heart. Get out of my head. Well, you know what's going to put peace there? Earth, wind, and fire. Snoopy. I think I wrote my book because of Snoopy. You know, because Snoopy, you couldn't mess with Snoopy. 
Snoopy was Charlie Brown's anchor. He anchored him in peace in the midst of that chaos that he was going through. Inner peace is what shifts us into having those silence and calm moments so we can come out proactive rather than reactive, because we can. <laughs> Ask the Menendez brothers. We can come out any kind of way we want to. You think they had everything a child could want. If you have no peace, you have nothing. Peace is proactive. True peace is self-control. You know, we really don't have control. We're really God's children. So if we listen to that power, we're listening to the self-discipline. If you do this, my child, I will go and prepare a place for you. And guess what? I'm going to prepare you for that place. It's not just going to be prepared. You're going to be prepared for it. That's why unity of Gainesville is, is, is here. Before we were ready, it prepared a place for us because it knew peace was important. It's not just one season like we're in the fall right now and the seasons change. Because I got introduced to the season of nonviolence in January to April, so that's going to be coming. The dates of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi's assassination to the date of Dr. Martin Luther King. There's 64 days in that window. And in those 64 days, we're supposed to celebrate peace. But guess where peace starts? It ain't going nowhere if it doesn't go out there. So it starts here. You have to trust in that divine presence that's in us. If we don't trust that, we're uncertain. You know, we, we, we think we know when we use our ego. Edging God out, I love it. I got this, God, move out of the way. <laughs> War. Okay, God, you got this. Peace. When I've got it, War. When God's got it, peace. Like, I, I seem like I get this by now, but the universe is going to present us every time the higher we climb, the more it's going to see whether you were lying on you for peace, which is really reactive, or you're relying on that source where peace comes from, where it all resides. There's no place that peace is not. Peace is a choice. I've been watching a lot of things with this election coming up, and Ali has come up, his relationship with Malcolm X, Malcolm X's relationship with Dr. Martin Luther King, the Kennedys. All of those dudes were around when I started out. And all of those dudes died while I was a kid. All of them, every single one of them that was standing for peace. Guess what? We still call them their names. Can't get rid of love. Can't get rid of peace. It might look like it temporarily. But the lady who survived all this, most of their wives did. Um, they survived this war against their husbands and lived. Can you imagine? Um, Coretta Scott King, Marilee Evers, Ethel Kennedy. Ethel was pregnant with their last baby when and she had 11 babies. Can you believe that? 11. I thought I was going to be her when I was growing up and then my reality kicked in. I'm like, okay, Ethel, you got this. I'm, I'm done after three. Because <laughs> I admired her so much. I'm like, I'm going to do that. No, I'm not. <laughs> but the story was told by the child that had not arrived to meet her father. 
but she knows him like he was here. Guess what that is? Peace. I think peace is love. Love is God. God is love. If there's no peace around it, there's no God in it. And people say they go to war for God. God. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But well, that's another subject we won't talk to. But what I will talk to is that Mother Teresa's recipe for peace is on my website because all those guys that got killed during my childhood stood for peace. And Roots came out when I was a kid, too. 17 years old. I didn't know what they thought was going to happen to the hallways of my high school, <laughs> showing us really what happened then. But we were proactive students even then. There were no fights about seeing how we were treated. And it could have been, because there were riots just because Rodney King got beat up, you know. But they were killing us like we weren't people. So this is one of the things that saves me, too. Mother Teresa's recipe for peace. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, my favorite, Others may be jealous, be happy anyway. The good you do today, others will forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see in the final analysis, it was never between you and them. It was between you and God anyway. So when I want to retaliate and be reactive, I have to pull out Mother Teresa's recipe for peace. It's like, be kind anyway. I don't want to be kind. I want to kick their butt right now in front of everybody. It's like, ooh, is that her? Yes. But that's the reactive side of me. I have discipline. I get to put myself in check with this peace talk that I've got going on inside my mind and inside my heart and inside my soul. And it doesn't come from me, because I told you what me will do. But what God will do through me is help me to be proactively peaceful. Because we all have a tendency to criticize ourselves. You know, if somebody's pointing a finger at us, we're very good at figuring out what's wrong or inadequate even about ourselves, and particularly about others. We constantly are beating ourselves up because we don't do exactly right or everything's not perfect, and it hurts, but we still keep beating ourselves up. Now, that's self-cruelty. Uh-uh. I'm not going to let you beat me up, and I'm not going to beat me up. Peace is proactive. When we know what peace is, we are self-aware. We have imagination. We have a conscious, and we have the will to listen to that power and not be sucked in to less. We can always get more. Proactive is accepting responsibility yourself. You know, those soldiers, I, not that the soldiers that left us didn't, but the ones that survived those wars, they had to have some proactive peace consciousness about themselves. They had to. 
They had to know that there was a power working for good. They had more to do when they got back to us. Some of them didn't get treated properly after going over there and saving the world. You know, the Ali got stuck with that. His name was Cassius Clay when he won the Olympic title. But when he came back to Louisville, Kentucky, and they treated him, he couldn't eat at a restaurant. And he said, I didn't get treated like this over there. He threw that medal in the lake or the river. I don't know if he ever went down to try to get it back. But this is what I know about accepting responsibility. When we blame and accuse others, we are reactive. We focus on the weaknesses of other people and get so involved in their disturbing behaviors, we forfeit our power to think, feel, and act in our own best interests. On the other hand, by exercising proactivity, we don't let the weaknesses of others drive our decisions. In spite of others' actions and dispositions, we make choices according to our values, our purpose, and our vision. So he was still kind of looking, you know, his name changed to Ali after that. He, was, he met Malcolm is how he got to that path. But all I know with all the names I've called, including yours as you call your name, once we become dependent on God, we are independent people. As long as we depend on another being, we are dependent. And until we pause in the peace of God, we will always be dependent. The only time you're independent is when you're standing in God. And that's when we can be interdependent. That's when we can get together and have peace among us all. As long as we are dependent on someone else, that's where war comes in. Because I think I got to get it from you to have it. You agree with that? I do too. It is significant to know that we can only make choices to be one if we know what being one with the one is. If you don't know what the one is, you don't know what I'm talking about. That's why there's so much war. People don't know what we're talking about. That's why I wonder if my grandchildren know the Lord is their shepherd. The law is our shepherd. L-A-W, if you want to use that word, because it's natural laws, fundamental truths. I know the words bother us sometimes. Words can bother me. I don't like ma'am. I've been telling, don't call me ma'am. And I'm like, I've been taught to do that. Please don't call me ma'am. I don't know when I turned into a ma'am. I think when I became a grandmother, I became a ma'am automatically. But I know that interdependence is a choice only independent people can make. I know that give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish. You feed him for a lifetime. We have to teach proactive peace. That means we have to be that. And this one, because I think war is a problem. The significant problem we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking we were at when we created it. War begets war. Peace begets peace. So I stand on the shoulders myself of Harriet Tubman, my Aunt Harriet. I used to have up H2 on Mondays because of those two women. Eleanor Roosevelt, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and my godmother, Dorothy Nelson. They're all advocacies of peace and resilience in my life. I think you all have names you can call that help you to know peace. Some of them are still on the planet. Some of them are not. Matter of fact, this whole list I just called is not on the planet no more. But there are those that are. So we get to call on our ancestors. We're in the Day of the Dead season for my Mexican sisters and brothers. And 
one of those, my Aunt Harriet actually died on Halloween. So it wasn't a happy day at first for a couple of years. And now it is because I understand death is not the end. There is no end when it comes to happiness and love and peace. It goes on forever. That's why people who did serve as vets, we see their names on the wall in Washington and we touch it. And we remember them like they were here now. So peace is always available. Always. Peace is always available. We have to believe it is available. We have to know it. I can't tell you. My peace is not your peace, but we can be peaceful together. And in closing, there was a show where people were getting their citizenship. And to me, that's a way to spread peace and be at peace with the fact that you contribute to this country in an abundant way. That's proactive peace when you want to go through what they go through to become a citizen. Uh, I don't think we as Americans would have passed that test <laughs> if we were trying to become one. But this is a song that they use. I'll read the words. It's by Lee Greenwood. God bless the USA. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I worked for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today because the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. I am proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died who gave the right to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today, because there's ain't no, there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. And so it is. I can't sing it all, I'll start crying. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 